I was, I was sitting with him, and, and I, he had me the, for, for the first three months. He, ha, he actually had me. I, I lived in his tent and slept on the same chapta with him, like on the bed. And I was the only student that I was told that he ever uh, did that with. But, and then I wanted to go and make my own. He didn't tell me to go. I just started feeling, you know, you know, all the other students were over in the student housing, which were basically um, little twig huts with, made from sack, old sacks of rice. So anyway, I was sitting with them, and uh, I was looking at his uh, his dara, you know, his his. His robe and it had a lot of dust on it, very dirty. And I was thinking, it just occurred to my heart, a nawafatum min al-iman. It just occurred to my heart. He was reading, and he closed his book and he looked at me and he said, Hamza. Samatar hadith al min al have you ever heard the hadith al badadatu min al iman? And I said, no. And he said, a tadri al badada? Do you know what badada is? I said, no. He said, jeeb al qamus. Go get the dictionary. Because he used the dictionary of al fairuz abadi. So he went, I went and got the qamus and I looked up badada. And it said, having no consideration for the appearance of your clothes. And a few years after that, I was in Medina, and I mentioned that to some people, and one of the people there said, I find that hadith difficult to... And I, I went to the bookstore and, and, and I saw the book of uh, Hujjat uh, Kandahlawi, uh, Hujjat Allah al-Bariga. And I, and I actually bought it. It's still in my library and I have the page marked. Um, and I, I just opened it. You know, I wasn't looking for anything. I opened it and it said, as for the hadith, uh, the hadith al-Tahur, Shatr al-Iman, wal-Ahadith al-Lati waradat fil-Nadafa, la tunafi al-Hadith al-Badadha min al-Iman. As for the hadith that are all about cleanliness, they don't negate the hadith about uh, unkeptness. Because the hadith about unkeptness are for the Bedouin. Because if the Bedouin didn't have that hadith, they would feel bad because they live in the, in the, in the outdoors. And so the dust gets them all the time. Their floor is made out of dust. They sleep on the earth. So their clothes will get soiled. And so that relates to the Bedouin, which Murab al-Hajj was Bedouin. But that's an example when you read these stories, these are real stories. These aren't, these aren't uh, made up stories. These are real stories that, you know, there's people that, and it's not that they can necessarily read your heart, but Allah will, it can be on their tongue and they just say that thing at that time because that's what you need to hear. And so that's why they say when you're with the, the awliya, you have to guard your heart. Right? When you're with the salihun. When I know zikya Allah ahad, we don't claim anything about anybody. Allah knows who his awliya are, but nahsibuhum kadarika. We think of them that. We have a good opinion of these people. We should really have an opinion of every Muslim is a wali. That should be our opinion because wilaya, there's wilaya amma and wilaya khasa. Wilaya amma, every Muslim, Allahu waliu ladina amanu. Allah is the wali of every believer. So every believer is in wilaya with Allah. And those believers could be amongst people that you think are non believers at the time. So you should even consider non believers are possibly awliya of Allah. 
because you don't know their end. Omar was always a wali of God, even when he was bowing to idols in Mecca. Because Allah's knowledge doesn't change. He doesn't find out something new about Omar. Oh, I didn't know he was going to believe. Allah knows he's going to believe. So he was Allah's friend even when he was uh, in his state of shirk. In the ilm of Allah. In the knowledge of God. So the stories are important. And that's why traditionally they've been recorded and, and told for this reason. قال 